President and Director of the Outreach Programs at CFI. He also has been a host of the radio show and podcast uh, Point of Inquiry, and he's presently the President of the JREF. So please welcome DJ Grothy. So I know that I will be scolded promptly after this for not having the mic on beforehand by the showman, James Randi. Apologize for that. Um, it's with great pleasure that I'm at Skepticon a second time. I think um, before I get into the few issues I want to address in my time with you today, our discussion, I want to recognize JT and this group of volunteers for this amazing free event. Join me in thanking them. I think the growth of these sorts of events the JREF's amazing meetings, uh, they've grown to these big events around the world now, uh, similar to Skepticon. We have the big event in Vegas uh, and in London, now in Australia. In each of these, about 1,000 people in Australia, about 700 people show up to talk about these sorts of issues. To me, these events really show the power of this movement or these allied movements. and. Uh, and I'm optimistic about that. I'm happy about this. This is not something that causes me consternation or hand-wringing or frustration or concern. This is evidence of something to celebrate. Quick show of hands, I, I, uh, kind of help frame our discussion. I'm curious, how many of you today, right now, would consider yourselves uh, part of what we'd call the skeptics movement? Just raise your hand. How many, uh, so I think that's almost everybody in this room. How many of you are self-identified atheists? I also think that's almost everybody in this room. Just uh, have the courage of your convictions, please. Not just, uh, don't brace yourself for, for needing the courage for an attack on your convictions. Uh, but are any of you just one or the other? Is there anyone just a skeptic, not an atheist, just an atheist, not a member of the skeptics movement? So I see maybe 10 out of the six to 1,800 people here. So that, uh, that suggests that there is a, a lot of damned overlap between the skeptic world and the atheist world. We're all mostly self-identified skeptics and atheists. I find it interesting that we're not just staying home being skeptics and atheists. We're at this conclave, this uh, convention or meeting of people of like mind. Uh, we're not just staying home decrying all the people who believe unlike us, people who aren't skeptical, people who aren't atheists, people who believe in pseudoscience or the paranormal or God or ghosts or what have you. Instead, we're coming together to do something with our skepticism. Maybe it's just rah-rah and kind of feeding off our energy. That sounds a little new age, but you get what I'm saying, you know, enjoying one another's company. Uh, maybe it's to advance skepticism in society. Uh, we're not just fetching. I want to spend my time talking today about first a question that becomes tedious and tiresome if it's the only thing you ever talk about, but I think it merits our attention this weekend, and that is, what is skepticism? Second, whether or not it's proper, in quotes proper, to apply skepticism to religious claims. Third, I'd like to address the question as to whether or not Skepticon, as this big event, is misnamed. We're all atheists here, most of us. Uh, should this instead be called atheist con, as some people have suggested online. And lastly, I want to finish up with some general observations about some fault lines, real or perceived fault lines, within the broad skeptical movements. And I want to talk a little about what I think are some best uh, practices or good strategies to adopt to advance our shared aims. So that show of hands just now showed that we're all skeptics and atheists. Maybe a dozen of us aren't in both camps. Are we getting together because we value just sticking it to our cultural competitors, arguing with people who disagree with us, uh, uh, sticking it to the peddlers of woo-woo, as Randy refers to them? 
sometimes even to the derision of believers. Uh, is that why we're getting together? So we can kind of make fun of those idiots over there? Or do we, oh yeah. <laughs> You're not helping the case I'm going to try to build, but yes, obviously, that, that is an organizing principle. We like talking about why we're smart and they're not. Maybe some of us, I submit, are just getting together because we think truth is better than falsehood, and that is worth organizing around. <laughs> kind of on cue, good. Maybe we really just like getting together for revels and drinks. Last year, I remember staying up till like 7 or 8 a.m. in the morning with Rebecca Watson and PZ, and I really thought I had a chance to beat them at the drinking game. Um, I need a little more practice. Maybe, uh, maybe that's why we're here, you know, just sense of community, all that. Are, are you at this conference rather than at home in your basement on your computer because this is the only place you could find answers to these important skeptical questions? You can't get your atheism or skepticism fix by reading the skeptical blogs or reading uh, uh, you know, Randy's books or the podcasts. You actually have to come to a big event like this to get your, uh, get your skeptical thrill on. So. Uh, we're at an event entitled Skepticon. Uh, I think the reason we're here is a little of all of the above. Uh, Skepticon is a play on the word skeptic or skepticism, so let's define that term skepticism. At the very least, and in common usage anyway, skepticism is just saying no to other people's nonsense beliefs. It's rejecting beliefs for which you find no good evidence. and. Uh, I think this really uh, merits talking about. There are a lot of new faces here today that weren't here last night. I know in some of the discussions last night, some of this was touched on. Um, this first sense of the definition of skepticism is just rejecting false beliefs. For most folks, when they say, I'm a skeptic, it means they're saying some other belief over there is nonsense. They're rejecting it as untrue. When you're skeptical, you're skeptical about some belief or claim. So that's one sense of the word, saying no to nonsense. But I don't think that's sufficient. I think that is a paltry definition of the word skeptic. It doesn't go nearly far enough. So a second aspect of skepticism that I want to explore is that it is a way of finding things out. Skepticism is a method of inquiry, not just rejecting a nonsense claim, uh, it's not a doctrinaire set of non-beliefs. It's not a list of things you must not believe in to be a skeptic. Uh, instead, it's a method of inquiry. If you're going to buy a car, you're going to kick the tires, look under the hood, maybe take it for a test drive. You're going to inquire about the car as to whether or not it's really worth the money. That's a skeptical activity. It's not rejecting the claim that it's a car worth the money, you're just going to look into it. You're going to inquire into uh, whether or not it's worth it. And that's where the word skeptic actually comes from, from the Greek word skeptikos, which merely means to look into or to inquire, to find things out. It doesn't mean the rejection of a belief to reject a claim without inquiring. It means to inquire and only then to accept or reject the belief based on evidence. In this way, skepticism is continuous with science, and that's why skeptics talk a lot about scientific skepticism. It's evidence-based inquiry. It's not uh, having conclusions and then looking for evidence. It's open-minded inquiry and only believing those things for which there are uh, av uh, adequate evidence. So considering the second sense of the word skeptic, is skepticon misnamed? Is Skepticon more about all of us getting together and asserting uh, our non-beliefs, adhering to a statement of non-beliefs, that everyone here is or should be an atheist, and if you're not an atheist, you don't belong here? Is Skepticon actually less about open-minded inquiry into extraordinary claims in general and more about dogma, atheist dogma, as it's been put? by some people who aren't here who are upset that we're here. 
I just argued that skepticism is, yes, a rejection of nonsense beliefs, but it's more than that. Importantly, it's a method of inquiry. Uh, since we're defining what skepticism is, I want to talk about what gets a lot of, sorry, a certain number of skeptics really wound up, and that's what they call the scope question. What's properly looked into as a skeptic, and should other things be off limits? Is there a proper scope of skepticism that's demarcated uh, for one reason or another from other things uh, that people believe? So if the second way of thinking about skepticism, a method of inquiry, of finding things out, is a more complete definition of skepticism, what does that more complete definition of skepticism imply? I'd argue that it implies that skepticism is about approaching all sorts of claims, not just the God claim or the ghost claim, but widely, widely applied. I don't think that our skepticism should just be limited to the things that go bump in the night, like ghosts or monsters. I believe that our skepticism can and should be widely applied to many domains of inquiry. We all know many people, in fact, I bumped into some of us in here, who are skeptical in some areas of their lives, but not in all areas of their lives. Maybe they're even really gullible in one or another area. I was telling PZ last night that uh, I guess I get scolded a lot by some skeptics for being a big booster of what's called transhumanism, uh, this notion that accelerating technology will increase lifespan and, you know, just it, some of it is fringe science or uh, on the borderlands of science. Uh, some skeptics say it's pseudoscience. Uh, so I get a thump sometimes for not being a consistently applying skeptic who rejects all uh, untested uh, uh, or on proven claims. So maybe all of us have one or another area. But surely we would admit that it's not ideal for us to have a special belief that we say should be immune from skepticism. Isn't the goal to be skeptical consistently about everything in order to come up with the best answers, the best and most accurate view of reality, even though that view should always be amenable to new evidence, changeable in the light of, of new findings, still the goal of skeptical inquiry is to come up with the best picture. Should we not be skeptical of the paranormal, but also of ancient received wisdom, also maybe of possibly outmoded beliefs about morality or even political ideologies, maybe even skeptical of the media? Do we only want to be skeptics of ghosts and chiropractors, homeopathy and psychics, but gullible and open to manipulation and deception in all of these other areas? I want to be very clear. I personally believe that skepticism should be widely applied, that the same toolkit we skeptics apply to claims about UFOs and ghosts and the Loch Ness Monster and so-called complementary and alternative medicine, that that same toolkit should be applied to those, to, to those issues and should equally be applied to all of our consumer products and to the things we hear from politicians and the media and to a whole host of economic and political questions, even to our justice system, really everything. Uh, I personally believe that, but I also want to say that while I think skepticism's remit is broad and can be broadly applied, that the nonprofit organizations who advance skepticism necessarily engage in a division of labor. And that's because uh, a mission is unfocused if it tries to do all things to all men, to quote uh, badly the Apostle Paul. I probably shouldn't quote in this context. Uh, so as an educational nonprofit, the James Randi Educational Foundation focuses on empirical claims that are relatively easy to test, at least easier than debating who's right about politics. So yes, touched on this last night in the discussion, new faces. This is a discussion I think every skeptics in the pub gathering across North America should have on an annual basis, all the new folks. At the JREF, we focus on pseudoscience and the paranormal and supernatural claims that can be tested, the evidence looked at. Does Sylvia Brown have psychic or paranormal ability? That's more of an appropriate question for the James Randi Educational Foundation than is it Keynes or is it Hayek 
who has the right view about the commanding heights of the economy. I do think we should apply skepticism to economic claims. That's just not the JREF's mission. Other organizations have those kinds of focus. We're not set up, for instance, to address the God claim exclusively. That isn't our mission. Historically, over the last 35 years of organized skepticism around the world, PSYCOP, uh, later the James Randi Educational Foundation, Michael Shermer's Skeptics Society, historically they've tried to focus just on what I'm talking about right now, a limited scope of skepticism, what uh, Carl Sagan would call scientific skepticism, really trying only to look at you know ESP, ghost, cryptozoology, that sort of stuff. There were many reasons given for this uh, by the leaders of these respective organizations. Some were philosophical. Some uh, years ago, frankly, were just about fundraising, that if you're talking about atheism, you might lose some donor dollars. I remember that argument being made. Um, I reject that. Um, I think there's another good reason to have the scope, but it shouldn't be that uh, profit motive. Uh, I think the best reason to have that limited scope is merely a pragmatic division of labor. Some organizations focused on applying skepticism to religious claims, American atheist, others. Uh, some to questions in politics or philosophy and ethics. There was an organization set up to apply skepticism only in the medical arena. Other organizations to religion, ethics, society. And in quotes, skeptics organizations focused on testable paranormal claims. But it gets complicated the past five or six years because the lines have recently really begun to blur. Both James Randi and Michael Shermer have enthusiastically come out as atheists or brights, if you remember that whole uh, project, the brights project. Randi, last year at the first annual Carl Sagan Day in Florida, uh, referred to himself in a kind of enthusiastic way as a Richard Dawkins kind of atheist. Michael Shermer and Paul Kurtz both, ha Paul Kurtz is one of the founders of PSYCOP, both of them have spoken out many times that the scope of skepticism, the skeptical movement, if not the scope of these nonprofits, but of the movement in general, may be too limited and may be too focused on trivial stuff, maybe. People have asked how relevant are some of the issues that some skeptics focus on, including Michael Shermer himself. You know, Mr. Skeptic Magazine, he said, you know, how many times do you want to just look into Bigfoot? There are bigger fish to fry. Uh, I, I personally don't think Bigfoot and UFOs and those topics are trivial, but he's branched out. He's written books uh, not only on God, and morality, applying skepticism to those domains, but most recently a book applying skepticism to economics, which traditionally was verboten in organized skepticism. So he's branching out with the skepticism. Randy's spoken out increasingly about political issues. He's blogged on randy.org about global warming, for instance, not a traditional skeptic topic. Time will tell if this branching out of the scope of skepticism will pay off for skepticism. Uh, I'm open-minded. So we've talked about how skepticism is not just saying no to other people's beliefs, but it's more affirmative. It's actually a method of finding things out, and that it's, in that sense, kind of continuous with science, scientific skepticism. We've talked a little about the scope of skepticism, and I've argued that personally speaking, if not organizationally speaking, that no question should be off limits, no issues taboo, including the God question and any other kind of question. Now I want to get back to this issue as to whether or not Skepticon is misnamed. Is the, if the scope of skepticism in general is broad, even if the scope of the organizations is narrow, and the scope of skepticism in general includes religion and other things, then get this, a hard claim, atheism is skepticism. Except that it's just skepticism of one kind of supernatural claim. So there's a lot of hand-wringing where people say, oh, those atheists are trying to equate 
atheism and skepticism. They're trying to make them the same thing. I haven't noticed anyone do that. Maybe I'm naive or I'm deceived by you hucksters. Um, but uh, I do argue that atheism is skepticism of one supernatural claim, the God claim. And if you'll bear my butchering of the language, a UFOism is skepticism of another kind of uh, claim well within the purview of skeptics. Or a psychicism is another kind of skepticism. But just because you uh, say, yes, skepticism of psychics is skepticism, it doesn't mean you're equating skepticism of psychics with all other kinds of skepticism. Atheism is skepticism, but just about one supernatural claim. Atheism doesn't mean, this bears emphasis, that you believe that God does not exist. I haven't met one person here that said that, and in my 12 years of kind of skeptic rabble-rousing, I've only met two or three people who say, I know God doesn't exist. All the others say, I lack belief that he does exist, because either there's bad evidence, junk evidence over here, or no evidence, and no evidence is a perfectly legitimate reason not to believe in something. So Skepticon, which is focusing lots on skepticism of religious claims, is misnamed. If you conclude from that that skepticism means just atheism, but as I said, I don't know anyone who concludes skepticism means just atheism. So skepticism, uh, uh, Skepticon is not misnamed if you get uh, that atheism is a limited kind of skepticism. Uh, I would have liked to see some different viewpoints presented on the program and in the panels, and I think that's an easy fix, and this is just the second one of these, and this event is bound to grow. And I am very excited to see that happen. And that leads me to fault lines, real or imagined, in the movement that includes all these atheists. Skepticism, it's believed, is under siege by atheists. Some skeptics really do feel threatened. I don't think they're here. Uh, but they really feel threatened by the damned atheists trying to take over, trying to make skepticism just be about one message and one message only, and that's skepticism of the God claim. It's been argued, um, I think poorly, that atheism is killing, I, I quote, skepticism. I don't feel such a threat because skepticism is not a set of non-beliefs, because it's not doctrinaire, but instead it's a method of inquiry, there's room for someone in our midst, in our movement, who believes in God. And that person, if he or she has reasons, should, be, should allow those reasons to be scrutinized. And if that person has no reasons, like Martin Gardner or deists or fideists, others, um, then the skeptic can say, because you presented no evidence, I lack belief in that claim. And the believer should say, no harm, no foul, as Martin Gardner always did. Martin Gardner never faulted anyone for saying, well, Martin, I think you're being irrational to believe in God, uh, but we're good friends anyway. You have no reason. You admit it. Thank you, at least, for being honest about that. <clears throat> I, I think it would, I just want to be on record, I, I do think it would be a boring and tedious skeptical movement if everyone only talked about another reason why they didn't believe in God. But it'd also be kind of boring if people only talked about another reason why they didn't believe or they lacked belief in Bigfoot. That's why I really like this broad skepticism. And I, uh, if, if uh, I have to be on record about this, I tend to like, uh, if there's a difference, skeptics more than just mere atheists, if you'll allow the two categories. Because I know mere atheists who, whom I wouldn't consider skeptical very much, except of that one supernatural claim. And I know a lot of skeptics who are damn fun to be around. They might kind of believe in God of some sort, but I have more in common uh, with them as skeptics than I do with the atheist who's not otherwise skeptical. 
And uh, in the discussion I had with Richard Dawkins at uh, the amazing meeting in July this last year, we talked about that, that atheism is not enough. There are atheists whom I don't consider skeptics. Bill Maher it, you know, pushes his skepticism of God, but he is uh, also kind of pushing his denialism of uh, uh, medical science, evidence-based science. Similarly, Joe Rogan, a great, funny, brilliant atheist comedian, uh, rather hear a sermon by him or George Carlin than any other kind, uh, denies that the moon landing happened. You know, he believes it was a hoax. So he's not a skeptic broadly construed, he's just a kind of an atheist. And mere atheism is not enough. And that makes me want to conclude my remarks here and then we'll open it up uh, for uh, some discussion uh, with some thoughts about strategy. Our movement suffers from what I've for a couple years called the Mensa effect. It's where a bunch of smart people get together in a room like this and one person says, I am really damn smart. <laughs> and therefore, I'm right. And you're really smart, therefore you should know that I'm right. And that's how so much of our conversations go. Everyone thinks their definition or their view is the only way to go. There's emerging a kind of hierarchy in skepticism. Some people say those issues over there are trivial. They, they're not worth the time of the skeptic. These issues over here, they're bigger fish to fry. Uh, PZ suggested something like this last night. You know, what are you, what are you gonna worry about? The encroachment of religion in society and those, um, I think many of them are nonsense claims or are you gonna worry about chupacabra? Which one of those uh, is more important. Uh, on the other side, there are skeptics who say, uh, who argue for a different kind of hierarchy. They say the only things skeptics should test are, uh, the only things skeptics should look into are testable claims, and if a claim is not testable, and many definitions of God are not testable, then a skeptic should say nothing about it. Of course, I believe that no evidence or bad evidence are both perfectly good reasons for not believing in something. Uh, so I reject that. I reject that kind of uh, special territory for uh, private belief that can't be touched at one way or the other. So this kind of Mensa effect leads, um, among some of us, to a kind of zealotry. And because I think uh, skepticism is really fun and zealotry isn't, I want to limit the zealotry, right? I think skepticism is, in addition to all the other things I suggested it might be, it's also kind of a fun hobby. You get together with your friends and you have a gay old time or a, you have a fun time. <laughs> <clears throat> so I want to temper the skeptics on either side. The skeptics who say, you're not allowed to talk about those issues, and the skeptics who say, uh, we should only talk about, say, the God issue, because it's the big kahuna, it's the most important. I want to be clear, though, I'm not, when, I, when I'm talking about tempering the zealots, I am not in any sense talking about tempering our impulse to go after the charlatans, but only about the impulse some of us may feel to sometimes stick it to people even within our movement, who disagree with us. There's a lot of scolding going on, and this happens in the LGBT movement and so many other movements, but there's just a lot of scolding. You're not doing it right. You should change and do it my way. Um, and I, I find that happening more among the people I agree with than the people I sometimes disagree with. So no one here said, if you're a believer, you should leave, right? But there are uh, skeptics who say the atheists shouldn't be as involved. And this, those skeptics, I think, have nuanced views. And, and so it's a really complicated terrain it's worth talking about. As, uh, as skeptics, we should full throttle go after the frauds, the quacks, the people who harm others by peddling nonsense. Indeed, for decades, that's been 
Randy's passion, kind of motivated by a, a deeply uh, and profoundly felt sense of right and wrong, he went after, he goes after charlatans because the harm they cause. So I'm not saying temper our zealotry when, it, when we're addressing the harm. I'm talking temper the zealotry when we're talking uh, to, uh, to one another. We should admit that we aren't always going to be on the side of right. In fact, a, a value, a central value of skepticism is always being willing to change your mind in the light of new evidence. And we should also concede that believers in whatever, God or ghosts or, or whatever it is, aren't always going to be on the side of wrong that we think they are. They're not always going to be villains just because they believe unlike us. By this I mean that we may be right in the sense of being correct, but wrong in the sense of being less than charitable in our approach to those whom we might consider gullible. Sometimes our skepticism of some sorts of beliefs, right as it is in terms of the truth, is wrong-headed in terms of how it plays out. Believers in whatever we ourselves are skeptical of, ghosts, gods, alternative medicine, UFOs, crystal power, chakras, therapeutic touch, the list is really, really long. Uh, as Jamie Ian Swiss, my friend, says, uh, and he's persuaded me of, of this as well, my all-time favorite of these beliefs is uh, the belief in the power of pyramids, which, no kidding, is called pyramidiacy. Uh, so the list is long. Uh, uh, I, I, I just, uh, I, I think going after believers, um, well, we should understand that when we do, uh, we should understand why they just, gosh darn it, dislike that. Believers dislike the uh, exposure. They reel at the exposure of their unsupported beliefs precisely because of the kind of false beliefs they are. Randy's work, our work as skeptics, it's, it often hits people where they live and breathe. It's, uh, these beliefs are central and big and important, and they're about our place in the universe and, and uh, uh, survival of life after death and all of these big issues. I don't think they're trivial. If psychic powers don't really exist, and that implies that souls don't exist outside of or removed from the body, it may mean that the mind is only what the brain does, and when you, when you die, you're actually dead. This is serious stuff. And so we should understand why people might be so resistant to the skeptical message. When we say that there is either no evidence for God or there's bad evidence for God, those of us who are atheists, the majority of us in this room, um, we might well understand why this hurts the feelings of the God believers in the skeptic ranks, right? Uh, doesn't mean we should shy away from saying that, but we should recognize that it's not only always truth at all costs, no matter how painful, but sometimes a spoonful full of sugar helps the medicine go down. And you can say things, uh, and, you know, this is the uh, old debate that the more you talk about it, the more everyone, I think out of sheer exhaustion, just says, all right, we all agree, let's have a drink. So, uh, I would never argue that we go overboard when trying to be understanding of the faith heads, as Richard Dawkins refers to them, or to the believers in woo-woo, again, as Randy refers to them. I'm not saying that we eagerly accommodate every nonsense belief, but I'm just suggesting that we need to have both a tough mind as skeptics, but also tender hearts fueled by our kind of caring about other people and where they're at and you think about you know life's journey and is someone just a, a fledgling skeptic or some you know someone been at this for many years uh, as uh, someone rather disparagingly referred to them online last night uh, in the midst of all this stuff um, oh they're, they're, they're doing it again, those newbie skeptics. I mean, that's a kind of dismissal of new people in our fold. I think that's counterproductive. So, uh, yes, I'm just suggesting that we need to have both a tough mind as skeptics, but tender hearts fueled by caring about others' well-being. Too much of a tough mind and you become a naysaying cynic. You stop being a skeptic and uh, you kind of turn into a crotchety, curmudgeon, sourpuss who just rejects claims out of hand. Too much of a tough mind and you become kind of hard-hearted. 
On the other hand, too much misplaced tender-heartedness without enough tough-mindedness, and you become lax about the truth and the harm that believing falsehoods may, br may bring, including falsehoods about belief in God, whatever variety that God is. So in this way, just being right is, is not going to cut it. We have to be right and also good or effective about being right. You have to be good with how you do your skepticism as well as trying to be right on the issues, always willing to change our minds in the light of new evidence. And this means, I'd like to underscore this in conclusion, that there should not be any purity tests in the skeptics movement, that nothing is out of the bounds of skeptical inquiry, and that most importantly, that atheists, as well as God believers, who I might just maybe you think I'm being a little cheeky, but generally, if they're a skeptic, they'll say, I have no good reason to believe in God, still I believe in God. Well, both of these kinds of skeptics belong in the skeptics movement. Thank you. So I made my remarks a uh, little short, so we have a, a couple uh, minutes for questions, if there are any questions. Uh, yeah, a couple questions right here. Hello. Um, my first question is directed to the audience, and the second one will be to you. I'm not from the U.S. I came here with a group from Ontario, Canada. We drove all the way here for 13 hours to be Wow. <laughs> You talked a bit today about using skepticism to outside areas and considering um, having caring aspects as well as considering the well-being of others. I just have my first question to the audience, kind of off topic, but being there's a gun show next door, I thought it was relevant. Um, how many people here have used skepticism to um, consider what their food choices are? For example, any vegetarians or vegans here today? There's actually seems like a lot, I noticed a trend just like with forums that a lot of vegetarians and vegans use skepticism and, um, about And so the choices. question? My question to you is, do you think- I am a vegan, by the way, a failed one, but yeah. <laughs> My question to you is, do you think applying skepticism um, to the food choices we make, acknowledging that many are based on, you know, like tradition, for example, do you think that's important at all? I do. And I believe that you can do it in an evidence-based way. I do believe that if we're talking the scope question, a lot of skeptics cohere around the fun aspects of skepticism, right? And if it's always kind of this hectoring political uh, uh, sermonizing at skeptic pub gatherings where someone says, I've used my skepticism and looked at the evidence, and therefore I'm a vegan, and you should be too. That's exactly the problem uh, that I was uh, addressing when a skeptic says, I'm skeptical of God belief because there's either bad evidence or no evidence, and you should be, do be too, and conversation shuts down. I believe you should be able to say that, right? No questions are off limits, but if that's the only thing you say, that's not a fun skeptics in the pub night to me. I hope that uh, kind of gets to the question. Hi, uh, Edwin Kagan, National Legal Director for American Atheists. Yeah, I'm glad you're here, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I've been listening now to, for several hours to discussions on attempting to define atheism. I, I think there's no such thing as new atheists, by the way. It's made up by the religious there's, right. There's, there's old atheists. Yeah. And, uh, and, and what is a skeptic and so on. Now, why are we doing this when there are other real issues to be dealt with? Uh, why, what difference does it make? Is this to be a Council of Nicaea for skepticism and, and attempting to develop a creed that everyone should adopt? Uh, and I just wanted to mention that. I really appreciate that question. And it, it's almost as if we scripted it beforehand because that was no. my point. Uh, there should be no doctrine uh, or statement of non-beliefs. There should be no uh, uh, skepticism should not be doctrinaire. I do, however, maybe, maybe if I'm understanding you, I do, however, disagree that it's, uh, I think it's worthwhile to define our terms. Anytime people get together, yeah, define your terms. 
uh, I would do that unapologetically. Okay, well, shall we then have excommunications and that sort of thing? Or? Well, a as I concluded my remarks, I think there should be a place in the skeptical movement for all stripes. Those who, uh, you know, I, kn I know a skeptic who believes that it's possible that alien abduction happens, but generally is skeptical. I'm not going to boot him out of my club just because he doesn't match up on every uh, domain of skepticism that I do. So uh, the answer is no, no excommunication, uh, unless you owe me drinks and don't pay up. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, DJ. Two quick comments. One, it struck me that many of the things you said about having a tender heart yesterday were preci precisely the sorts of things that I had in mind when you wanted to label me an accommodationist for those things, and yet you reject that label yourself. And, and maybe that's something for a longer conversation yeah. later. But, but, but the other thing, and this is the more important thing I wanted to say, you said several times yesterday and today that you've never heard anyone at this conference say the following. So I want to say it out loud at the microphone. I believe God does not exist. If by God we're talking sure. about what most people in this mm -hmm. country mean by God, the right. God of traditional theism who is all good, all knowing, and all powerful, and who is intimately involved in the affairs of the world. I think that the non-existence of that God follows from the principle of non-contradiction. I think that picture of God is incoherent. And so I think we can say that that God does not exist. If right. you have this more deistic right, understanding, right. then I lack belief in that God. But right. I think it's really important to keep that distinction in mind. And that, I, I agree with you on that distinction. On the first point, I have no idea if I'm an accommodationist or a confrontationalist because I piss some people off with my atheism and I piss some atheists off with my nice guy approach. So I think I'm a confrontationalist or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Hello, DJ. Uh, Adam Brown with AtheismResource.com. Um, as, as much as I love what JREF does, and I agree with you, that the broader the claims that skepticism looks at, the more diversity of claims, the better it is for human understanding. My question stems from, you don't see a lot of things in Skeptic that Shermer would say, you know, a ton of articles on why unicorns don't exist, because the harms of that claim are right. pretty minimal. So do you feel that when looking at things like pseudoscience and homeopathy, they may have some harms on humans that don't go seek medical attention, but of all the claims skepticism looks at, at least my opinion is that atheism is the one that has the most subcategories of harms on gay rights, human rights, creationism, intercessory prayer. Right. So when triaging the things that skepticism looks at, is it wrong for it to focus primarily or at least um, itinerarily first at the God claim that has clearly historic harms, present and future? That's an excellent question. I think there are atheists who are skeptical about all the other things. I think PZ uh, would not disagree with my characterization of him in this regard. It, you know, he's a skeptic. Dawkins is a skeptic of ghosts and uh, alien abduction and crop circles and all that stuff. But he just looks and he says, where am I going to focus my energies, my attention? Uh, if I'm looking at the harm question, it's going to be the big kahuna of religion. And I, in fact, agree wholeheartedly that the harm litmus is a great barometer for deciding what you look at. And that's why skeptics concentrate a lot of attention on complementary, so-called complementary and alternative medicine uh, and other and faith healing. Randy uh, went after faith healers, not because he just wants to stick it to religion, but because there's measurable harm of those, uh, those claims, those beliefs in society. I don't believe it should be for atheists who have that priority, who are also skeptics of all the other things, to tell other skeptics who are looking into chupacabra or Bigfoot or UFOs or haunted houses, you're doing it wrong. Just like those skeptics who are looking into those claims should not tell atheists you're doing it wrong. Um, I'm often chided for saying, hey, many approaches, many voices, it's, you know, uh, you, you have to adopt a lot of different strategies because invariably one person with one strategy says, you're wrong, DJ, because you're including that strategy I disagree with. But I, you know, I, I've worked in the GLBT movement. There are all kinds of different strategies there. Um, uh, the racial and sexual minorities, while the metaphor breaks down, it's analogous, at least insofar as many 
strategies are adopted, and indeed to advance our shared aims, many need to be adopted. So I think I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, does this go to 12.30, I thought? 12.20. 12.20, yeah. So, yeah, okay. I think we have time for one more question. Yeah. All right, um, on skepticism, uh, in 1988, think you kind of made the point that skepticism is not just crossing your arms and saying, well, I'm not going to believe this and I'm not going to believe that. And um, I think I think a good way to try to convey what skepticism is to other people is to say that it's not just saying I'm not going to believe anything. It's taking the claim and looking at that claim and the evidence for it and also saying how could this claim be doubted and kind of weighing the two and, and coming to a rational conclusion. Do you, do you think that would be you know, a good way to, uh, to put that? I, I do. I agree with that. I think that's uh, skepticism as a method of inquiry and not a statement of non-belief. So I agree. Thank you, everyone.